Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the July birthday party here at Harvest Homes. We're going to start off with a little tune that you may recognize. You're welcome to sing along if you know this. Gone and take a sentimental journey. Gonna set my heart at ease. Gonna take a sentimental journey to renew old memories. I got my bags, I've got my reservation. Spent every dime I could afford. Like a child in wild anticipation. I long to hear that all aboard. Seven, that's the time we leave at seven. I'll be waiting up for heaven. Counting every mile of railroad track that takes me back. I never knew my heart could be so yearning. Why did I decide to roam? Gonna take that sentimental journey. My first interest in music would probably be from hearing my uh, my grandmother play the piano or the organ um, for church. And my mom also played piano, and we were signed up for the mandatory piano lessons as <laughs> kids, my sister and I. And so we took piano lessons probably around the age of nine is when they started off. and. Uh, I, I wanted to be a composer. That seemed to hold interest to me. I'd listen to, uh, I had LPs of, of Beethoven and of course Chopin made sense. It was kind of like you read what's on the page. And I kind of wanted to make up my own thing. And, and I had the impression that it was kind of this mysterious sort of uh, thing that inspiration would come to you and you would, would write something. And um, then later on in life, I took up guitar, kind of late around 17 or 18. And my guitar teacher, who also taught a ton of instruments, he um, it just he explained music theory in ways that made sense in chord structures and chord changes and uh, popular music. And it was like, oh, well, it's kind of a formula and you can plug chords in and, and do things with them. And uh, yeah, took it from there. And when did you, when did you get interested in performing in public? Or is that just um, I, I think it's... Uh, Maybe a common thing for, for introverts is like you, you like to perform in public if you have something to hide behind like a guitar and uh, and then actually one-on-one -on -one interactions with people you're a little little more leery of. <laughs> um, but as far as my performance today with senior communities, it, it sort of grew out of, um, well, my love for, for music of the era and also there's a built-in audience at my work and, and I can play for them and um, I'm on the clock getting paid to, to play music and great. So you, you play at a, at a number of different venues. I do. But your biggest concentration is senior centers and don't care about stuff like that. Do you just sort of fall into that or is that a conscious decision? My... My gravitation toward the senior living situations around town as sort of an organic growth. Um, as, as a young kid out of high school, I um, was looking around at what other people were doing and saw people going to college and changing majors and wasting lots of money. And I thought, well, I, I'll go to work and once I figure out what I, what I want to do when I grow up, I'll, uh, I'll have some money saved to pursue that education, whatever it may be. As it turned out, I started working at this retirement community, not far, maybe a mile and a half from home, so I could walk if I wanted to. And I've uh, been there, this will be 20 years, the end of this year. And from there, you know, I was learning guitar at the same time, and I would play for birthday parties, and we would have performers come in, but in our budget range and I would end up seeing them perform and I would play with them and they say nice things to me about oh wow this is a lot of fun and uh, you're, you're really good so you know over the years I would just keep playing there and then Providence Elder Place a lot of their uh, day center participants 
um, live at this community I worked at. And their bus driver came in one time, and over the years he'd seen me performing, and he asked me, do you ever play anywhere else? And I said, well, you know, I do some coffee shops and weddings and events and things, but um, no other, you know, senior communities really. And he's like, well, would you be interested in that? And it's like, well, I'm certainly not opposed to it. So music is really fascinating, and, and you can look this up online, and I'm sure the Alzheimer's Association has things to say about it. Um, but there's a certain period in you know our development, especially in the teen years where our bodies are changing, and the music we listen to at that time gets cemented in our brains in just a different way. There's a lot more emotional activity going on, and, and there's something about hearing that music years later that will bring back that those those feelings or just that sense of time and place and um, I remember my parents have done chapel services for years at the retirement community I worked at and we would go in the Alzheimer community there and, and sing the old hymns and some gal who maybe had not spoken all day would start singing along and know all the words to all the songs without a book or anything and it's just it's it's locked away in there but accessed a different way and the, the music stimulates that and then as far as the interaction with with my audience members go I like to call them my regular listeners and uh, I just I, it's it's more than just a performance it's it's about building a relationship with the the clients that I'm serving and you know I try to get to know their names and I'll tell them you know sometimes I forget my memory's not what it used to be and they'll always tell me oh that's fine we understand <laughs> Um, I do take requests from my audience members, and uh, as my regular listeners know, I even have a, a song submission form on my website. Um, but yes, if, if you have a request for a song that you would like to hear, I, if I don't know it, I'll do my best to learn it by the next time I'm there. Or maybe, you know, sometimes it's, it takes two or three months because my list is longer than my arm now, but I have a couple regular listeners who will sometimes present me with a, a written list of songs they'd like to hear. Um, the one thing, you know, sometimes I'll say, so does anyone have a request? And of course, everyone's mind goes blank at that moment because you're on the spot. So I try to avoid doing that and I'll, I'll watch the crowd and if I see that, you know, well, the last country tune really got a lot of response. Um, more so than the, than the the swing era music I was playing, I'll try and go in a more country direction, or you know whatever it is that that I'm feeling that this particular group may be enjoying more. If I don't know a song that somebody asks for, the first thing I do is look for it on YouTube, um, and uh, Spotify is also popular, and then I'll I'll try and do my part and I'll go and buy it in MP3 on Amazon. Um, so hopefully somebody's getting some sort of compensation out of it and then I will uh, you know listen to it in between gigs um, driving around the next day and and I'll write it out try to you know I try really try and commit things to memory um, I feel like carrying a book of music and having that between me and my listeners is is one more barrier and I like to, to make eye contact with with folks who are listening and uh, sometimes if I know their names I'll sneak their names into the songs and sometimes I'll catch it and, and start cracking up laughing or, or they'll totally miss it and somebody else will say he just sang about you <laughs> do you listen to any current music any contemporary music at all I, I I jokingly used to say that I stopped listening to any music after 1940 um, but my audience members they're getting younger these days so I'm learning a lot of Elvis and the Beatles and um, you know, country western, which is maybe not really up my alley, but but it's you know something I learned. Um, as far as current music goes, I I try and keep up with what my three daughters are listening to at home, and uh, you know we we have a lot of music equipment at home, so sometimes we'll set up dance parties, and uh, of course Baby Shark is huge with the toddlers these days. If you haven't heard that one, it's it's a big hit, and um, I even played it at a wedding recently, and that got everyone on the dance floor <laughs> um, but there's you know there's a lot of good music today um, it's just it's different it's not like they used to make it for sure but um, you know when this generation is 70 or 80 years old that's the music that's going to be rekindling those memories so after 20 years at my day job I, I gave my nine month notice and uh, it's, it's almost like family so uh, they're they're sad to see me go but I have whittled away my work hours to one day a week um, in this year and at the end of next year I'm 
I'm saying sort of goodbye to everyone. I'll, I'll still be in there once a month to play the birthday party and uh, to see if there's any maintenance needs that are unmet that I can, you know, have the expertise to to cover. Uh, but yes, um, 2020, my vision for that year is full time full time music. How does this make you feel when you're able to see? Um, I guess, I guess entertaining. Yeah. Um, for me personally, this work I find very rewarding. Just getting out and, and getting to connect with somebody in this way, um, it, it's really great. And, and your regular listeners, you know, they, they look forward to seeing you every month and you get to know each other. Um, I'd say the huge downside is, is when you, you show up and they're not there. 